you have a question, just raise your hand um, and we'll call on you. Please speak very clearly, um, both in terms of what your question actually is and with your voice. Uh, let's start uh, with the lady over here with the hat. Um, so to Gregory, uh, when I've uh, applied for jobs, if I see a job has a women's STEM initiative. Sorry, I'll actually repeat it. I can't answer. I am significantly less likely to apply because there was something incredibly insulting about suggesting that I couldn't get the job myself or that I need predominantly male tech teams to give me a leg up. Do you not think that there's something very insulting and patronizing about university administrators suggesting that we need to help you or you need to transform you into this world leader because of your background? Do you not think that makes stereotypes so much worse? Right, I'll just repeat it for the mic. So the question is about um, uh, applying for jobs or looking at uh, universities when they have initiatives to promote diversity, diversity that's actually very insulting and patronizing, implying that certain groups need an extra leg up or it needs to be told by a group maybe that's uh, more prominent there how to get a job. And the other thing is. Yes. Um, I apologize when we talk about orchestral music for a second. Um, so orchestras started doing growing auditions. They started having um, a curtain between the kind of judging panel and the um, auditioner um, so that they wouldn't be, you know, they wouldn't have the bias uh, against women to kind of play a part of their decision making. So they did that for a while and they looked at the data and they realized that women were still not being um, admitted onto um, <coughs> Went to orchestras at the same rate, uh, or at, you know, with at parity with men, and they were like, "Well, I guess you know the women just aren't good enough to be in you know these symphony orchestras." Then they realized that these women wear heels when they audition, and when they would walk across the stage floor, their heels would clack, clack, clack against um, the wood paneling, and that was signaling to them, even without knowing what the person looked like or if they were defensively male or female, um, that it was a woman. And so what they did was they laid down a, a red carpet so that people could walk and their footsteps would not be heard. And lo and behold, women and men were um, accepted to be symphony orchestras at the same at the same proportional rate. So when you talk about something that is insulting um, or patronizing, I think of there's a system in which one group is here and the other group is here, and we're doing something to do this. Not to do this, but to reach back um, to correct the bias that's already inherently there, even if it's not explicitly stated. But I would say that your example cuts in the opposite direction, that if you believe that there is implicit bias, we should be going to a colorblind system that does not allow implicit biases to have an effect and, and just take it out of the equation. Anyway. Well, that goes back to one of the statements I made at the very I think, beginning. Yeah, but, I, yeah, I think it was a good response. Mm -hmm. good response. Let's go to the, um, let's see, gentleman in the jacket here. Hi, yeah. Um, Mitch McDonald, this is from you. Um, so you talked about how if we were to do away with affirmative action, that probably we shouldn't worry about underrepresentation at Spain and Mexico and whatever, because they're very committed to racial diversity. Do you think that's that in itself? And if you were in charge of the world, would you prohibit them from using affirmative action too? Well, would I prohibit them? Uh, no, I wouldn't for the same reason that Mr. Davis spoke. I, I think they have a perfect right to uh, use whatever uh, employment criteria that they want as private institutions. I, I don't believe it's a good policy, however. I, I think, again, um, what, what we're seeing now in the STEM field is just incredible obsession on the federal government's part and every science department above all the gender, uh, and they're, we're uh, making gender a criterion for admissions to engineering and physics departments. I think this is an incredible waste of resources. China is ruthlessly meritocratic. It doesn't give a damn if, a, if the science lab is all male or all female. I think, again, qualification should be the only thing that counts. Quick follow-up on that. Sure. Where, where do you see this going in the future, as both of you, I guess? Do you, do you see it sort of people, in, in your view, come to their senses and, and getting back to a Chinese type meritocracy, or do you see it spiraling out of control and, and Greg, what do you think? I, I don't see an, in the near future any diminution of this. And again, the problem is we cannot solve the academic skills gap at college. We have to start focusing much early on so we don't have to worry about this later on. 
Yeah, I, I'm a bit of a pessimist when it comes to uh, the concept of affirmative action surviving um, the next several decades. I think the kind of um, unabated attack on its constitutionality has not stopped since the late 1990s when the University of Texas's program was uh, shuttered. Um, and I suspect that within you know the next decade or, or decades that it won't exist anymore. Um, and that's when we have to start asking real questions about things like implicit bias on the process on the parts of um, uh, on the parts of uh, college admissions boards. The only thing I'll say to, to your question though um, is that college admissions has never been meritocratic. Um, Ever, it, you know, here at Harvard, admissions started by you know a few men going to a few boarding schools and talking to the you know the um, the um, the, perf the perfects and saying you know who's who should we get who you know who's Harvard worthy and who's Yale now um, and then they realized there were too many to do that so they started having you know uh, essays then they realized there were too many Jews so they started having interviews um, you know. All of these things are none of them are ever meritocratic. It's, it's, that's not a system we actually live in. Um, I don't believe a meritocratic system is actually best, but that's a, a whole different conversation than we have today. All right, we'll take one more question, gentleman here in the gray jacket. Thank you. Uh, did I, Mr. McDonald, understand me correctly in your opening remarks to say that you would prefer uh, drawing distinctions based on? Voluntary rather than involuntary characteristics, but you prefer absolutely uh, no distinctions on anything other than qualifications at all. If you had to rank a hierarchy, so if people were going to, if we can use the word discriminate without any negative connotations, um, on something like, uh, say, political belief rather than race, but if you could have your way, would you eliminate any kind of uh, discrimination, whether it be by voluntary or involuntary characteristics? Yeah, I would have it purely based on uh, people's academic qualifications. I think it takes out it takes out the discretion, it takes out the nauseating self-importance of admissions committees like Yale or Harvard, you know, that believe that they're crafting this thing of beauty. I mean, it's, it's so self-important. I would just, I would just go as straightforward as possible. Because again, you're gonna get diversity. The idea that simply by making sure that people are are competitive with their peers, you're not going to have people that think differently, that have passions for music or art or or, or stargazing is ridiculous. You know, the, how are we? Why are we so obsessed with these superficial aspects of the self? Define people by what you love rather than by the superficialities of gonads and melanin. All right, brief response if you want to that. And, and um, the thing I love is black people. Um, I love I love helping black communities. I love being a part of black communities. I love um, myself as a you know role model for black people. Um, that's what I wrote my college essays about. That's what I've lived my life to do. Um, and when we talk about erasing my race, we're talking about not just which box I check on the form, but all of that as well, and I become less than um, human when it comes to application. All right, thank you to both our speakers, Mr. Davis, Mr. Davis.